بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل ویو بین ڈسکسنگ دا کاسٹ منیمم فنکشن سو ویو سین دیٹ اینڈ ویو آلسو سین اے نمبر آئی بلیو ٹو ایگزامپلس ان دا پریویس ویڈیوز ویل آن دیٹ سو دا مین آئیڈیا از کلیئر دا مین آئیڈیا از کلیئر یو ہیو ٹو ڈسپیچ دا لوڈ ایٹ دا منیمم کاسٹ اینڈ دا منیمم پاور جسٹ ٹو میٹ دا لوڈ ڈیمانڈ We, we do not need to, uh, you know, dispatch any extra power. But one major thing that we did not talk about in the previous video is losses. We talked about in the previous videos were a lossless system. The power that we were generating, all of the power we were transmitting and it was being utilized as the load demand. But in practical, this is not the case. We have got losses. We've got losses, many losses in the in the generating system, in the through the load side, transmission lines, etc. etc. The major loss that we will talk about is the transmission line losses. Because the huge amount of losses occur through what? Through the transmission lines in the form of heat, I square R losses. R is again rho L by A greater the length, greater the resistance, greater the resistance, greater the power loss so the transmission line loss has to be included it has to be included now mainly they are associated with the hydropower station why because hydropower stations are generally located far away very far away from the load centers and they are connected through long transmission lines and in the long transmission lines of course the power loss is far greater than the medium and the short transmission lines of course in the medium and short there are also losses but with the length again they would increase as you know from Tarbela Faisalabad circuit Tarbela to Faisalabad so a huge amount of distance huge amount of power loss the thermal power station sometimes we will we'll see in the numerical problems as well maybe that the losses are mostly not associated with them why because they may be nearer to the load centers they may be nearer to the load centers Faisalabad in the Faisalabad city we have a thermal power station which is inside the Faisalabad city so you don't need a long transmission line for that so the transmission losses are negated in that case the hydro cannot be built over here because you have to you have site considerations you need a very huge reservoir for water storage yes so there is things you know but in this video we will talk about what we'll talk about the transmission line losses we'll talk about losses included in the system for the economic load dispatch as well and and mainly we will we will talk about what the losses that are present are the transmission line losses. So I've given it the heading transmission line losses. Now in this case, in this case, the power requirement, we'll not talk about the power demand. We'll talk about the power requirement. So the power requirement will be equal to the power demand plus the power loss. Plus the power loss. Power requirement is what? That you have, that you require to dispatch to generate so again in the same form as in the previous videos we saw that you have n number of units so the power generated by each unit is let's say p1 p2 p3 up to pn and this is let's say i i write it in a compact form in a summation form so this is the total power dispatched this should equal your power requirement in the previous video I wrote over here was the power demand because I did not have any loss but over here I have to include the losses as well so I am including the power requirement which means that I have to go for the power I have to fulfill the power demand as well as something has to be lost as well right yes now the Lagrange function the Lagrange function again was what it was the input function f plus lambda which is the incremental cost and phi which is what which is from here so pd plus pl pd plus pl minus the summation of the power dispatched or power generated is basically equal to phi according to the Lagrange function 
come to Lagrange. Basically, it is zero from here, you could say. But Lagrange said, put it equal to phi. Let's say we put it equal to phi. Yes. Put the values over here. L is F plus delta times PD plus PL minus the summation of the power. This would give you the total power, right? Yes, the total power generated. Now again, what you do is, to, you have to do for the minimum dispatch according to the, uh, for, to the load demand. So you have to do what? You have to differentiate it and then equate it equal to zero. Differentiate and equate to zero for the cost minimum function. So you have what? You have a DL with respect to dp is df with respect to p plus this lambda is a constant just a lagrange constant or a lagrange parameter i don't know what is called just a constant which is what then it's the rate the incremental cost then you have d power demand with respect to power plus you have a power loss with respect to the power equation and then you have a minus the summation uh, and 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 this this now have a look power demand is constant at a particular instant of time for a particular duration of time let's say i talk about this duration of time for instance zero to a so have a look the power demand is constant so which means the constant derivative would be zero this would come out to be zero now the power loss is a function of time yes and then the total demand this summation is equal to the total demand yes total power so this would become equal to one this would become equal to one so which means that my d the lagrange function dl dp is equal to df dp which is the objective function f or the input function plus you have a delta times what uh, d p l dp and then you have minus one you have this thing right yes and what can you do it if i equate it to zero for the minimum cost operation i equate it to zero right so what would i get i would get that df with respect to p would come out to be uh, negative lambda or if i take the lambda constant so i would get lambda into one minus this thing isn't it like this just let me confirm yes yes so dfdp would come out to be lambda i take the negative common from here so one minus a dpl over dp is that fine yes so this is now when the power loss is included so the dfdp in the previous one if the power loss was not included so we had dfdp only equal to lambda whereas over here when the power loss is included so you do not have to put it equal to lambda directly right yes also i have a factor over here the factor one upon one minus dpl dp this is called what this is called the penalty factor this is called the penalty factor which would be separate for separate station power loss with respect to its own power that it is transmitting we'll see it through an example this is denoted by a capital pf denoted by capital pf the small pf uh, denotes what it denotes the uh, uh, the the power factor right yes so this is about it let's say we talk about an example let's say i talk about an example two thermal power plants are connected by long transmission lines with the power loss equation given as so the power loss equation is given like this two transmission lines and each connected by long transmission lines which means both of them will have what uh, power losses so which means that this power loss equation would be a function of both p1 and p2 so i have 0 0.554 into 10 to the power negative 3 p1 squared plus 0 0.442 into 10 to the power negative 3 p2 
squared and this is in megawatts right yes the power plants have the operational cost model operational cost models are given which is f1 is 123 plus 8.21 p1 plus 0 0.00 double to five p1 squared and then you have the function f2 is 211 plus 8.56 p2 plus 0 0.00 235 p2 squared with plant one adjusted to deliver 100 megawatts so this is given that the plant one is adjusted to deliver 100 megawatts. Find the incremental cost of energy, which means lambda, the power delivered by, by plant two, which is P2, the load demand, which is PD, the total power loss, which is PL, and the penalty factors. So penalty factors both for one and for plant two, so these are the things that are unknown. So step number zero was what? To calculate F. F is already given. If you are given in terms of H, you multiply it with the cost X to give you F which is H times X. You don't have that step. Step number one is what? To take the differentiation, take the derivatives. So DF1 with respect to DP1. This would give you what 8.21 plus 2 multiplied 0 0.25 uh, would give you what 0 0.0045 0 0.0045 P1. Similarly then you have DF2 with respect to DP2. This would give you 8.56 plus 2 multiplied. This thing would give you what? Where is it? 0 0.0047 0 0.0047 p2 right you also have a power loss so you have to take the power loss also you can say that is a partial derivative d f no sorry d p l you have to take it with respect to dp1 and similarly the power loss you have to take with respect to dp2 so p1 operate would be p2 constant and while with respect to p2 so you will have p1 constant to multiply this thing what do you have dpl with respect to dp1 would give you 1.108 1.108 into 10 to the power negative 3 p1 and over here you would have 0. Uh, uh, double eight. 4 into 10 to the power negative 3 p2 these are the equations that you have got right yes now what do you have you have it this way this would be equal to what this would be equal to lambda into 1 minus dpl dp1 which means this thing right from where from here df dp would be equal to lambda 1 minus dpl dp so over here you this is with respect to plant 1 so you would put a 1.108 into 10 to the power negative 3 p1 right yes similarly this one you would put equal to lambda 1 minus 0 0.884 into 10 to the power negative 3 p2 now for us the next step was p1 plus p2 would give you the power requirement p1 plus p2 would give you the power requirement which is the power demand plus power loss i have p1 already if I have P1, which is 100 megawatts, I can find the value of lambda from here. This implies what? If you put P1 equal to 100 megawatts, from here you can calculate the value of lambda. What would be the value of lambda if you put 100? That would be uh, 9.48. 
9.48 rupees per megawatt hour. This comes out to be 9.48 rupees or any currency rate per megawatt hour. Have a look. You have done this. How? P1 was given. So you've got your lambda. Now you've got your lambda over here. So from lambda, you can calculate now the value of P2. If you put the value of lambda over here, you can calculate the value of P2. What would that be? The value of P2 comes out to be 70.33 megawatts. 70.33 megawatts. You've got your P1, you've got your P2, you've also got your lambda. Have a look. P1 was already given. P2 you've got, you've got your lambda. Power demand and power loss. So power demand and power loss are both unknown over here. So you have P1, P2, this is basically equal to power requirement. You can also calculate power loss through the formula of power loss. Yes, yes, you already have the formula for power loss, which is like this. You would have a zero point double five four into 10 to the power negative three into 100 whole squared and then plus zero point double four two into 10 to the power negative three and then you have a 70.33 whole squared. So which means the power loss, if you calculate it, this comes out to be 7.72 megawatts 7.72 megawatts so have a look power loss is also done now if power loss is done so have a look you have the power loss you have p1 and p2 so which means you can find out the power demand so which means that power demand would come out to be p1 plus p2 minus a PL put down the values 100 plus 70.33 minus 7.72 the power demand the load demand is what the load demand is 162.61 162.61 megawatts is that fine it is penalty factors Penalty factors would be this. You can put down the value of P1 over here as well. You can put down the value of P1 over here. If you put P1 over here, let's say you get a value X. So the penalty factor associated with plant 1 would be 1 over 1 minus X. 1 over 1 minus X. Right? Yes. What is the value that you are getting? The value that you are getting is... Uh, and no, not x, I will just show you the value. It's 0 0.1108. If you put P1 over here, you get 0 0.1108. So 1 over 1 minus 0 0.1108 gives you what? Gives you 1.12. 1.12. Similarly, for the plant 2, the penalty factor 2 would be 1 upon 1 minus dpl with respect to dp2 so dpl with respect to dp2 put the value p2 over here which is 70.33 what do you get from this one is 0 0.062 0 0.062 and you you do this one what do you get is 1.06 1.06 so the power demand we also calculated, we also calculated the penalty factor. The penalty factor has to be separate for each power station. Is that fine? It is. So I will finish this video over here. I hope the concept is clear. You've got two types of losses, technical losses which are this I square R losses and other uh, in the conversions, stepping up, stepping down maybe. but the electrically technical and the other are pillifrage losses which would be what theft right yes <laughs> these people in the office pesco wabda they they say these are the administrative losses so they should not name it as such why because they are uh, administrative if they are naming it administrative which means that they are doing it themselves then because they are the administrators right yes so anyways this was about the uh, losses the losses are directly proportional to the square of the power dispatched I've already uh, I believe I've already told you this uh, yes have I not told you 
I have told you, right? As the power relation is what? The power relation is, let's say, under the root 3 Vi cos of phi, right? Yes, so which means the current is what? It is P divided by under the root 3 V cos of phi. It is. It is. So what do you have is the power loss. This P is the power dispatched or the power generated. The power loss PL is I squared R. Right? Yes. Voltage level you have to keep constant. Cos of phi the power factor is constant. Under root 3 is a constant. I is proportional to what? To the power dispatched. So which means I could say that uh, it's directly proportional to the square. I squared, so power squared. So power loss is directly proportional to what? To the power dispatched square. I believe I've already told you this. I believe I have already told you this. Anyways, anyways, that is it about it. That is it about it. See in the next video where we may have I may have uh, one or two more examples about this, right? A little more technical, you could say. Anyways, till the next video, take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.